Hello, my name is Ivo Grigol. I am a rigger and animator. This video is a general manual about animation in Blender for newcomers and about using the Norman rig. The Norman characters mesh and blend shapes are reused and were not created by me. While I adapted the original Maya rig to Blender, I also did a whole lot of additional scripting and development. Both versions are released under a Creative Commons license 3.0 and are free to use. The original contributors are Live Jeffers, Morgan Loomis, Peter Starostin and Neil Thibaudet. The first part of this video shows you how to get started from zero and then transforms gradually into a possibly boring manual describing the Blender interface and hotkeys. You probably don't want to sit through it all at once, but refer to it as you learn and explore. Nevertheless, I think it is a short and compact summary of the most important aspects of Blender from an animator's perspective. Let's get started. Download. Blender 2.5 is still in beta stage and the scripting language keeps getting changed. I tend to adjust the scripts to work with the latest development version. To ensure that the scripts work correctly for you, I bundled the rig with a pre-compiled Blender build downloadable at the graphicall.org website for Windows users. To install, simply extract the Blender zip file and run blender.exe. This is the default navigation in Blender. Middle click to rotate, Shift middle click to pan, control middle click to zoom. This is how you transform objects or bones in Blender. Hit G to translate, R to rotate in screen space, hit R twice for free rotation, and S for scaling. While transforming, you can press XYZ to transform around a single axis. Pressing the keys repeatedly switches between global and local space as indicated in the header. You can then also type in values numerically. You can get a final control while transforming if you hold the shift key. If you want to zero out your translation or rotation etc, press Alt G or Alt R. The transform manipulators can be set here and you can toggle their visibility by pressing control space. All hotkeys can be changed in the user preferences. Blender also comes with a Maya preset built in. I have set up my navigation to use the 1, 2, 3 keys instead of the mouse buttons. I provide a downloadable script to set this up in case you're interested. Copy the two directories Evo Animation Toolbox and Norman into your add-on folder in the Blender directory under 2.56 Scripts Add-ons. And now start Blender. Go right to File, User Preferences or hit Ctrl Alt U. Inside the add-on tab click on Animation and check Evo Animation Toolbox and also check Norman Rig add-on. Now let's head over to the editing pane quickly and please sh make sure the following items are checked. Visual keying, only insert needed and only insert available. Also check release confirms and I'd say set interpolation to constant. Now let's head over to the input panel. Uh, select with left mouse button and orbit style set that to turntable. Now if you want you can go to the file tab and specify an animation player to play back your play blasts. In my case I'm using, using the old Blender 2 4 player. If you're happy, happy with all your settings, uh, click on Save as Default at the bottom. Alright, now let's add Norman to our scene. In the File menu, click on Add, Rigs, Norman. We have the rig now loaded as a linked reference into our scene. For that reason, we have two nodes in the outliner. One, the original called Norman Rig, and another one called Norman Rig Proxy. So with Norman Rig Proxy selected, make sure that you are in Pose mode rather than Edit or Object mode and start animating. Click and drag on some of the controls to see what they do. Norman comes with built-in keying sets for each body part. We need to look at the graph editor, so click and drag on this little bar at the bottom here and 
drag it over like so and choose graph editor. If you prefer your header to be displayed on the top rather than the bottom of the window, hover your mouse over and press F5. Now grab the hip and move it down a little bit. Hit I, select norm and all. I is for inserting keyframes. Now we see a whole bunch of groups in the graph editor being created. Hit the right arrow key a few times. Uh, enable aut automatic keyframe insertion <coughs> at the bottom here. Move the hip around a little bit. This will automatically create a keyframe here. So if we scrub through the time, we see it's moving. So let's just insert a few more random keyframes just for the sake of demonstration. We can reduce the visual clutter here by clicking on this arrow icon. Now only curves for the selected bones are displayed. We still see some extra channel groups because there are some property keyframes that are related to the hip. If we want to, we can get rid of these curves by clicking on Remove Flat Curves in the animation toolbar. Now we only see the translation curves of the hip. Let's open the property panel by clicking on this little plus sign or hitting N and close each panel by hovering over and hitting the A key. Now you can easily rearrange the order of things and make it like so. Character properties or Norman properties is uh, what I want you to look into now. It is context sensitive and displays options for the body part that fits your active selection. So for a leg, we see things like the FK-IK switch and this cool snapping button. For the mouth, we see facial sliders. And when selecting this ring here, for example, we can hide individual limbs. If you want to do tweening, moving holds or ease in, ease out, check out this. Let's say we, we wanted to add a breakdown in between here. We click breakdowner. Now we can interpolate between the previous and the next keyframe by moving the mouse horizontally to insert a new breakdown key. Next I want to show you how to track arcs with the motion path tool. Let's go here to where it says action and choose the walk action. Now let's say we want to track the hip. Select the hip. Now we set our start and end frame here in the motion path panel in the armature settings. 0 to 24 and calculate. So if we look close now we can see the arc. <coughs> now if I change the animation it will update. Another super useful feature in Blender is the grease pencil. Simply hold the D key and start drawing. Now advance a few frames, draw something else. Now if you scrub through the timeline, it, you will see it's already animated. Look at the grease pencil settings in the property panel. Here you can change the color and thickness of your strokes. And also activate onion skin. You can even edit the keyframes if you, if you go to the action editor and set it to grease pencil mode. So what if we want the character to pick up an object during the animation? How do we constrain an object to say the left hand? Let's create a cube here. Now select the wrist and remember its name that is displayed. Select the cube and add a child of constraint. As target we set our armature, Norman Rick Proxy. For the bone we specify the bone name that we remembered. Click clear inverse and then set inverse. Now the cube follows our wrist. If we want to animate the influence, we can simply add a keyframe.